Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate prime numbers. And then I'm going to show you how to write a Java program to calculate prime numbers. Now, if you've already seen my Python video on prime numbers, this one's going to be very similar, except this one's going to show you how to do it in Java. So let's say we want to calculate all the prime numbers less than some number in. So the user will enter this number in. And let's start with the definition. What is a prime number? A prime number is a positive integer that is evenly divisible by only one and itself. The prime number is under 30, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. You can see these numbers are all only divisible by one and themselves. So is 9 prime? Let's look at the process that we use to determine whether or not 9 is prime. 9 divided by 2 gives us 4, remainder 1. So it's not evenly divisible, is it? There's a remainder, a remainder of 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3, remainder 0. So since there's no remainder, we can see that 9 is evenly divisible by 3. Therefore, 9 is not prime. But what we really have to check is all the numbers from 2 through 8. So we do 9 divided by 4, 9 divided by 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then we can see that we got one number among these where 9 is evenly divisible. Therefore, 9 is not prime. We're really only interested in the remainder in this calculation. And in this case, 9 divided by 3 has the remainder of 0 that interests us. So, the big question, how do we do this in Java? How do we do the calculation in Java to get the remainder? This is the mod function. So if you're not familiar with mod, mod basically computes the remainder of a division. So 9 mod 3 is 0 because the remainder is 0. And if 9 mod y is equal to 0, for any y between 2 and 8, then 9 is not prime. So let's write a program here. Let's look at a simple block of code to determine if 9 is prime. So we can say int x equals 9, we declare an integer value x equal to 9. We're going to have a Boolean value to decide is prime, and we're going to initialize that to true. We'll say it is prime, and then we're going to check for each of the values 2 through 9. So we have a simple for loop here. Inside that for loop, we're going to check if x, which is 9, mod y, each of these values, one at a time, equals 0, then is prime is false. So the is prime is just a flag. We set that flag to true, and then if we find some evidence to the contrary, then we set it to false. So that's basically the same calculations that we're doing here, right? We're doing division by 2 through 8 and looking at the remainders. So here's our code again. Let's say, though, we wanted to calculate all the primes up to 10 instead of just deciding whether or not 9 is prime. How would we change our program to do that? Well, pretty simple. Some minor changes here. We set up a for loop. Instead of just saying x equals 9, we want x to equal all the numbers from 2 to 10. x is less than 11. So this will iterate through the numbers 2 through 10. This is an outer for loop, and this is the inner for loop. And then in the inner for loop, we want the y to go from 2 up until 1 less than x. So in the example we did previously where x is 9, we want y only to go up to 8. So we change this to x, and then this is just a closing brace around our for loop. So with that simple modification, we can calculate all the primes up to 10. So if we wanted to find all the primes up to some number, let's say max, we could simply substitute less than or equal to max. Then we can get the user to input a number for max, or we can initialize a constant for max, or whatever we want. But now we, we can calculate all the primes up to this number max, and max could be a thousand or a million or whatever we want it to be. So we're using nested for loops. This is a common construct in computer programming. We have an inner loop that does most of the work. It's a for loop that iterates using, in this case, y, and we're iterating from c to d. And we have an outer for loop, x, that iterates from a to b. And we do some stuff. Usually there's a comparison or an assignment or some calculations in the inner for loop. And then we do some other stuff in the outer for loop. So I've loaded up our program here in NetBeans. And you can see that uh, we've added a class statement. There's a package statement here. These are pretty standard. The main function. And we're going to go ahead and run this. And we see it runs just fine. We're getting 2, 3, 5, and 7 with our maxes set to 10. So all the primes up to 10. So back to our code. We're currently finding all the primes up to this number max. But we're actually doing more calculation than we need to do. Because once we decide that 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3 remainder 0. Heck, look, we found our answer here. We have a 0. 
There's no remainder. At this point, we know that 9 is not prime. So we could simply exit from this loop. There's no need to do all the rest of these calculations, right? So we'll save some time by simply adding in a break statement. If x mod y is equal to 0, then we found an even divisor, and it's not prime. So we can just break out of this inner for loop and move on to the next x value. Now you can see we've added the break statement in here in our revised version of the code. This is version 2. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Uh, and that runs fine. And we don't have any performance comparisons yet between these versions, but I'll show you that later on in the video. Now another way we can improve our performance, we can save the primes to a list instead of printing each of them as we discover them. There's two benefits to that. One, it's going to be faster because each time we send a number to print, it actually takes a lot more time than adding a number to a list. Print is a fairly slow operation when done on large scale, so 100,000 prints is going to take a lot longer than 100,000 additions to a list. And the other thing, it enables us to use that list of primes later on in the program for other purposes if we want. So if we simply print them out, we really don't have access to that list for other applications. But this would generate a list that we could use for other things if we needed that list of items. So to add the primes to a list, we simply declare an array list. We don't know how long it will be, so we can't use an array. But we can use an array list of integers, and we'll call it prime list. And then at the very bottom, we say if is prime, then prime list dot add x. In other words, add x to the prime list. And it's that simple. So with a couple extra lines of code, we're able to add our prime numbers to the uh, prime list as we discover them. And that's going to improve our performance and improve our usability. And here's our third revision of the program. We've added in an array list called prime list that we can use to add the items to as we discover prime numbers. And we set the max at 10,000, so this will run through uh, 10,000. After each iteration of the list, we're adding it to the prime list. And, and then at the very end, we print out the prime list. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, that did an iteration of 10,000, and this says zero seconds. But you can see it printed out almost instantly. So let's go ahead and try that with 100,000. Still pretty quick. It took three seconds to find all the prime numbers up to 100,000. So pretty zippy there. That's great. Our program is now much faster because we use the break statement and we add the items to a list as we discover them, but can we make it faster? Let's look at this number 48, and then let's consider all the factors for the number 48. So we can do 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, 6 times 8, and then we come to this tipping point, this point where if you look at all the factors on the right side here, they're really the same numbers, just in reverse. 6 times 8 is the same as 8 times 6. 12 times 4 is the same as 4 times 12. So if we found that 48 is divisible by 4, then we needn't check if it's divisible by 12, because we already know that it's divisible by 4, right? Where this tipping point happens, and we do a redundant calculations beyond this tipping point, is somewhere around 7. It's actually at the square root of 48. So we could really save ourselves from doing calculations beyond the square root of 48. We really only need to check for, for primeness up to the square root of the number we're checking. So if we're trying to determine primeness of a number that is close to a million, well, the square root of a million is a thousand. So the square root of this number is probably very close to 1,000. So actually, we needn't do any more calculations beyond 1,000. Doing mod calculations up to 1,000 is sufficient to determine primeness for this number. So doing calculations beyond 1,000 is a waste of calculation. So how many calculations are we wasting? Well, if we were calculating all the way up to 1 less than the number, or uh, 999977, so we're 99.9% .9 faster if we simply stop the calculations at the square root of the number, rather than calculating up to 1 less than the number to determine primeness. And nicely, it's very simple to implement this change. We don't say y is less than x, we say y is less than math.square root of x. So it's a very simple change to give us a huge improvement in performance in our program. And here's our final version of the code. And the only change we really made here is the square root. We added math square root of x instead of just x. And let's see, let's run that up to... Uh, 200,000? No, let's just run it up to a million and see how it does. I think it can do it. So we're going to run this up to a million and see what it does. So it did it in one second. So it calculated all the prime numbers up to a million in just one second. 
Now let's look at a time comparison. I ran these four different versions of the program, calculating primes up to 200,000. The first version of the program, just our standard version, ran in 2 minutes and 7 seconds. When I added this break statement, the runtime dropped to only 12 seconds. So we got a huge performance gain by simply breaking out of the inner loop when we discovered that the number is not prime. And then in version 3, remember, we added the numbers to a list instead of printing the numbers. We only gained another second here, which is almost 10% faster. In version 4, we stopped calculating when we reached the square root of the number, rather than calculating up to 1 less than the number. And when we did this, our performance increased to uh, much faster. Primes up to 200,000 were calculated in less than one second, and so I ran actually up to 1 million, and it's able to calculate the primes up to 1 million in one second. So you can see with a few smart enhancements to the program, we were able to very substantially increase the performance from two minutes all the way down to a fraction of a second. That wraps up this video on calculating prime numbers in Java. I hope this was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.